Good morning, and thank you for being with me this morning. Won't you please become focused with me as we come before God our Father, and we ask that he allows me to open my mouth and he bring utterance, that he lets the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in his sight that he feels me as an empty pitcher, standing before a fresh flowing fountain, that he sends down fresh manna from heaven, designed with us in mind, designed to stir up that gift of thios within us and keep us moving up the highway towards our highest good. And for that this morning, we are grateful. We are grateful this morning. Today, is the third Sunday of September. The apostle is James, the son of Zebedee. The color is olive green. The idea is order, and the faculty of the body is the navel. Order, according to Webster's definition, is a straightening out as to eliminate confusion, setting in sequence in relationship to or adjustment gathering or arranging in preparation for a particular operation. Effective use, arranging so that the whole aggregate works as a unit with each element having its proper function. The navel, as you know, is the umbilical cord, the umbilicus, and it's where all infants or fetuses get their nutrition from their mother. Order is an authoritative command, direction, or instruction. Divine order is being directed by God. And today I want you to know that God's plan is in divine order. And you know that he has a plan to prosper you. He knows his plan for you. We know that God's plan has been in effect from the beginning to the end, the Alpha and the Omega, from Genesis to Revelations. We want you to know that in the beginning, he had a plan. And at the end, it's still the same plan. Psalms, which we have been focused on this month, reminds us of God's very character. Because it's, in, it's reflected through this word. He is righteous. He is faithful. He is unchanging. He is true. He is who he is all the time. He is God. And he keeps it 100. That's what the brothers would say. He's a real brother. He keep it 100. Yes. He's not in a good mood or a bad mood. He's in God mode. Yes. You are the one who comes to him in a mood, you know, varying degrees of belief and expectation. But God is faithful. He is unchanging. He is true. He's the truth. And he is in God mode. And you have to expect him to be in God mode. And you have to come expecting a blessing, expecting forgiveness, expecting his word to show you the way. It's according to your frame of mind how you come to God and what you get in return. Because he is God, you need to understand that he has a plan. It's called the master plan, a blueprint, a divine design for your life. He had a plan before you were even thought about, before you were begotten in the womb. He wrote the beginning and the ending. It's like one of those books that allows students to choose which, which action the main character will take at various places in the book. The book is your book. In the book of your life, you are the main character. And he allows you freedom of choice. He allows you to make choices which steer you in different directions. He gives you options. But what you need to understand is that your options create experiences for your life. But your ultimate destination remains the same. It might take you longer to get there. It might send you through a, a few valleys around a few mountains, but his end result 
is the same. You might go through some stuff and some things and some what have yous, but eventually you will get there. Also, what you need to know is that by, and this is going to blow your mind, <clears throat> your ultimate destination is not about your physical life. It's not about what you got, what you've accomplished, how rich you are, all the things you have to show. It's about your spirituality. It's about your consciousness. It's about who you are in God and how you're using that divine spirit, your thios that dwells within you. It's about that. It's about your frame of mind and your thinking. It's about your relationship with God, your reconnection to thios. See, some of us, <clears throat> excuse me, some of us need different things. As a matter of fact, all of us need different things. We all need something differ, different to bring us to our perfect state of God consciousness. Can I say that? Our perfect state of God consciousness. And God supplies all these things. He supplies everything you need to get you there. He's with you through your trials and tribulations. When you have made a choice as not on the path that he wants you to go, we recognize that that choice is an experience that you need to have to bring you closer in consciousness to where he wants you to go, all right, to what you need to learn so that you can be spiritually who he needs you to be. It's important that we are able to thank God no matter what the day has been because it was all allowed for your good. It was all allowed to get you mentally where you need to be in your consciousness so that you can be one with God. It's all about your connection to Thios, your relationship with God. When you nurture that relationship, he unlocks your understanding and you are able then to hear what he is saying to you. You are able to hear and obey. When you obey everything he's saying, you learn the lesson and get your blessing. And the blessing is that you have come closer to your Christ consciousness, to that state of mind that allows you to be one with your thios. See, some of us have to keep repeating, and repeating the same or similar experiences because we've not learned the lesson. You keep doing it till you get it. That's why you keep drawing the same kind of people into your life. That's why you keep getting the same type of relationships. That's why most of them end the same way, because you haven't learned a lesson yet. You've not learned what it's going to take to get past that. And until you do, you keep calling on to yourself that same lesson so you can get it. And then learn and then get your blessing so that you can move forward. So when you do this, when you learn the lesson, you then have a full understanding of your blessing. Remember that in the beginning, when he created them, after he blew the breath of life into us and we became living souls, then he blessed us. This was all a part of his divine plan. He then blessed us. He, did, he blessed us with what? Dominion which is your dunamis power. He gave you, he said, multiply. That means you should have plenty. He said, subdue and control. You got to subdue it. You got to control it. What does that mean? That means you're not boastful. You're not out there just wilding out. You're doing what God needs you to do, that thing that honors him the most. You know, you then become into, come into your realization of the real fact that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. Everything that you experience in life is designed to get you to this point, that state of consciousness. This is his plan. Remember, his plan is to prosper you. He knew it way back in Genesis. In the beginning, when he blew the breath of life into you and you became a living soul, he knew what he wanted to you, what he wanted for you. And in Jeremiah, 29th chapter and the 11th verse, y'all know it well. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, 
declares the Lord. Declare, that's a declaration. That's an affirmative statement. He said, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So I want you to understand today that that's God's divine plan and it is in perfect order that you should be prosperous, that you should have what you want, that you should have dominion, control, and you should multiply plenty. So you know that we are in our Rose Channel. And today, this week is the second week, and the affirmation is nothing can hinder, nothing can delay the manifestation of the divine plan of my life. Nothing can hinder, nothing can delay the manifestation of the divine plan for my life. Amen. My prayer for you as always is that you remain Christ-centered and you continue to be blessed. <laughs>